Welcome and welcome to the Afterwards program. Afterwards is a discussion of the weekly sermons presented by Bila Kuta, Church Without Walls, which is one of the many programs of the Shrine of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. My name is Baba Kufense Chike, your host, and I'm joined by esteemed Bishop Deja Nava Akita from Shrine 10 in Houston. Uh, you selected as your scripture, Luke 7, verses 37 through 9 and 48 through 50. Could you tell our viewers what was your inspiration for this particular scripture and how it fits the uh, title of the sermon? Well, the story is about the woman, and I think some people call it the story of the woman with a alabaster jar, where she comes into the home with the Pharisee and she pours alab expensive alabaster perfume or oil on the feet of Jesus. And I thought about that because it took courage. And I know initially you you mentioned that my the title of my message was My Soul Says Yes. Yeah. And actually, as I delivered it, I talked about the power of yes. Yes. Yeah. Because there's power in that word. And many times we are hesitant to recognize that there's power. We have an inner power that allows us to make decisions. Sometimes the conditions that affect us in the world around us can make us feel that we are powerless to act on our own behalf, to guide our own destiny. And what I was saying is that we have the power to do things even when society or communities try to put us in a box or to confine us to certain parameters and put limitations on what we are, the expectations are. And in it, this woman, she demonstrated that she had the ability to act on her own in, in her own best interest. And when you, what you just said made me think about the idea of rejecting uh, some a perspective that other people impose on you and the power that we have to assert ourselves in terms of self-determination and our own agency. And you speak, you speak more about that later when you talk about the faith of the, the woman who you talk about in the scripture. I like your comparison between the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, Zealots, and zealous, excuse me, to contemporary activist organizations like the Black Panther Party, the NAACP. And you talk about, or in your comparison, you reference that they, both then and now, sought relief from systemic racism and oppression. Could you elaborate more on this and how it applies to our people today? Who, are, who were these groups of people, the uh, Pharisees and the like? Well, as I talked about them, I said each each one of them represented a certain train of thought. Sometimes we think about, even when, today when we think about Black people, we, we people tend to think that we are monolithic, that we have one viewpoint or one approach. And we all have different ideas and different conceptions of what it takes to build a better community or build a better society or how we can bring relief to Black people. And these organizations during the time of Jesus had different approaches. The Pharisees, as I mentioned, they believed in, you know, the law. You had the Sadducees, you had the Essenes, you had the Zealots. But even in terms of contemporary organizations like the NAACP, the Black Panther Party, Urban League, they all taught, tried to bring relief to the conditions that affect Black people, but they all have di had different approaches. But the goal was the same, to alleviate the problems that were affecting us as a people. And we can't fault them because they had different approaches. We had to understand what they were doing and it, where is the commonality in the efforts that they had. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. You reference or assert that uh, Jesus, the Black Messiah, told the woman, it, quote, your faith has saved you. And that once the woman acted in seeking a better life and purpose, she found it. Please elaborate on how our faith can save us and lead us to a better life and purpose. Well, when I talk about faith, I'm looking at it in the, in the sense of the verb in terms of action. Some people think faith is just sit there and pray, which is a definitely a powerful tool that I use on a daily basis. But as James said, faith without good deeds is quite dead. So just believing and not acting on that belief is not enough. 
she could believe that Jesus had power to heal, that Jesus would be able to give her some kind of relief. But it wasn't until she acted upon that faith and actually went into his presence that she was able to receive the confirmation that she needed. So when we talk about faith, we have to act on it. We have to, our actions have to show that we have faith. Could you say a little bit more about that, that distinction, say between other churches and the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, the emphasis on faith being accompanied or fueled by uh, works? Could you just maybe say a little more I, how our programs emphasize that? Well, what we believe is, we don't believe in a blind, in what we call a blind faith, where if I just believe hard enough, things around me will change, conditions will change. Our faith, our, our belief is that when we act upon the insight, the intellect, the intelligence, the in, the revelations that we receive, that our faith is is sure to be to be shown. In other words, if you have ability, you don't just sit there and say. I'm able to move this chair, but I'm just going to believe in my mind that the chair is moving without actually getting up and moving. That is not, that's not faith. That That's not acting on faith. And if you're just sitting there saying that I'm going to wait until change happens without making, understanding that you have the power to make that change happen, that is not acted upon your faith. Yes. And tell us more about uh, you made a comment in the sermon, uh, the teachings of a revolutionary Black Messiah, Jesus, and his call for personal transformation. Uh, I think some viewers that are Christian may find this problematic, both the idea of Jesus being Black and calling for personal transformation. So could you maybe expound on that? Some? One of the things that Jesus said is when he talked to his disciples, he, he told them that sometimes they were had little faith, ye a little faith, and that if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could tell the mountain to move. In other words, if you believe deeply within your heart that you have the power to do something, that's going to motivate you to move upon that, which the disciples later did at Pentecost. After Pentecost, they, they exhibited the kind of faith that allowed them to do the kind of things that Jesus told them they had the power to do anyway. But Jesus was telling them that each one of them had to have faith. And his goal, he said, whatever I do, you can do an even greater things. So Jesus never said, I'm the, I alone can make things happen. And you have to just do as you see, you know, you just have to do the best you can. But that they could do even greater things. So he was prompting them to use the, the, the inner divinity that they had to become the great people that they could become. Thank you. I appreciate that clarity. Uh, it, you're in the, uh, the sermon today, part of your closing includes the assertion that God is seeking expression through us and that we have the ability to assist the realization of this expression through commitment, passion, effort, and training. Could you talk some more about that, please? Well, there's, there's many times that I'm sure... I'm not the only one that feels this way when we see something that's happening in our communities that we don't think is right. For example, when there's a call to diminish the <clears throat> importance of history, of African-American history, and to teach the true tenets of history. And we say to ourselves, that's not right. We're just saying that's not right. It's not enough. We have to do something. We have to say, well, what can I do? Well, you can go to your school board meetings and you can voice your opinion. You can create a, a reading room. You can get involved in, in educating our children the right way. There's different things that you can do, but you have to assert. And that feeling that's in there, that feeling is a part of that divinity that you have. God is speaking to us. You know, sometimes people think that God is this big booming voice that, that comes from on high. But many times it's a feeling, the insight, that, that small sense of, this is not right. I, I can do something. I have the urge to do something that, this, that you just can't shake loose. You can say, well, you know, I'm going to forget about it, but it keep, keeps resurfacing. That's that inner voice that's speaking to you, acting, asking you to do something to change the conditions that we see. Thank you so much. And we're about to, at the end of our, our program for this week. Uh, 
Thank you for, for a very powerful sermon and for this short time to discuss and elaborate on uh, the sermon that, that is being presented today. And one, of, and one of the things I would like to say, Baba, is that when I talked about the woman with the alabaster jar, she exhibits a, a quality that is evident in Black women, that we want to act on our faith. And because this is Women's History Month, I want I just want you know to have a shout out to all black women to act on our inner divinity, to use the power that we have to stand firm and to continue to struggle and to set examples as we have for generation after generation. And I appreciate you saying that. And I think in the example of the woman in the scripture, along with the two authors that you reference in the sermon, are examples of what you just said. Uh, as we close, is there anything that I may have missed that you may like to leave with our viewers and listeners? Well, just that we all have the power to say yes, and 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 it can be exemplified in the things that we do. We have the power. We cannot let anybody rain on our parade and make us feel that we are less than God created us to be. You know, we are perfect in the sight of God, and we have the ability to change the conditions. All we have to do is come together as a people and work for that goal. Thank you again, and it's been a, a pleasure and an honor to be in your midst to have this conversation. Thank you to our viewers for uh, viewing another episode of Afterwards for the discussion and in this discussion with the presenter of our weekly sermons presented by Bila Kuta of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. We invite you to join us next week for our weekly Bila Kuta broadcast and Afterwards conversation. You're also welcome to join us in person at one of our shrines in Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, Michigan, Houston, Texas, and Calhoun Falls. Thank you very much and have a peaceful week.